second generation computer they have moved from machine level language to the assembly level language so when it comes to the third generation of a computer so instead of transistor they have changed their basic components to ic that is integrated circuit if i want to store the data and instruction permanently i have to go with a secondary memory ulsi that is ultra large scale integration technology everyone welcome to the session 3 on overview of a computer myself rohini ts lecturer in computer science vidyashram pre university college mysuru so before getting into today's session i would like to have a recap of previous session so in my second session i have discussed regarding the evolution of a computer so when it comes to the evolution of a computer so here we have to concentrate on why the computers are invented so what is the main agenda of inventing the computer so that is mainly for the calculation purpose from the abacus to herman ollerith tabulating machine until that we have to work on that so in today's session i am going to discuss the generations of a computers so what are the generation we have in a computer how the computer evolved by generation to generation we'll going to have a look in today's session so when it comes to the generation of a computer so the generation of computer is broadly classified into five generation so if you look into here so depending on the development of the technology so what we are concentrating on this point so based on the technology how they are evolved or how it is developed based on that thing we have classified the computers as a five generation so that is generations of a computer so when you are working with generation of a computer so here you have to keep it in mind that is its year or duration of each generation and which is the main component that they are going to used in that particular generation along with what are the input and output devices they are using and one or more example for the each generation is important so these are the point you have to concentrate while you are learning with generation of a computer so then what and all you have to concentrate its year that is duration of each generation along with which is the material or which is the basic material they have used in the each generation along with that you have to remember which is the input and output devices they have used in the particular type of generation along with its characteristics and then one or two example for each type of generation is important so let me have a look regarding this first generation of a computer that is first generation of a computer so what is the duration of this first generation of a computer so it was in between 1940 to 1956 1942 1956 then what is the first point that you have to remember that is its duration so it was between 1940 and 1956 then which is the material they have used in first generation of a computer that is the first generation of a computers were making use of this vacuum tube as a basic component which is the main basic component of a first generation computer that is vacuum tubes they have used vacuum tube as the basic component in the first generation of a computer then what are all its characteristics so we'll see now the speed of these computers were very slow so you have to understand one thing whether it is slow or fast or whether it is expensive or a cheaper in cost and how will be the size of that each generation you have to concentrate when it comes to the first generation of a computer the execution speed of this computer is very slow so and storage capacity was very less so storage capacity of these kind of computers were very less and then these computers are larger in size so it may occupy the whole room so that much it was larger in size so how the size of this first generation of computer regarding the size it is large but it is less in the size of a capacity or its storage capacity is less along with that the speed of these computers are very slow so this is the one of the characteristics of this first generation of a computer then this generation of computers operated only on machine language so when we are working with computer we have to instruct the computer 
right so how we are going to instruct the computer by writing some instructions or with the help of set of instruction so i can call that as a program right so then which programming language they have used in order to work with this first generation of computer that is machine language which is low level language which consists of only binary digits that is 0 and 1 so they have used or they have implemented first generation of a computer with the help of this machine level language then input was based on the punched card so as i discussed earlier what is the input de uh, device they have used for the first generation that is punched cards and then paper tapes used as a input so punched cards and paper tapes were used as a input when it comes to the output output was obtained as print out so how we are going to get the output in the first generation of a computer once we are done with our calculation by giving the input with the help of this punched cards and paper tapes we are going to get the output in the form of printout in the form of printout then here i have some of the example for first generation of computer that is ENIAC, edvac and univac so these three are the examples which is resides under the first generation of a computer so when it comes to the first generation of computer duration is 1942 1956 and size was very high that is the size large in size and its capacity storage capacity is less and the speed of execution is very slow and they have used vacuum tube as a main basic component and here you have to understand one thing they have used machine level language for the programming and they are going to use punch cards and paper card as a input and we are going to get the output in the form of printout and some of the example for first generation computers are ENIAC, EDVAC and UNIVAC. So here you can see that it is a vacuum tube which is larger in size and it generates more heat and consumes more electricity power. So, which is the example of uh, first generation computer that is ENIAC. So, here you just need to understand its abbreviation. So, these abbreviations are important for one mark question. So, when it comes to there, it is important for one mark question. Then what it stands for? That is electrical numerical integrator and computer. Electrical numerical integrator and computer. So, in there, they have going to use 10 digit. 10 decimal digit that is 0 to 9 so not binary value so that is the example of this one and when it comes to the edvax it stands for electronic discrete variable automatic computer so in when it comes to the first generation of computer there we have three examples ENIAC, edvac and univac so when it comes to the ENIAC, then it stands for electrical numerical integrator and computer when it comes to the edvac electronic discrete variable automatic computer then what about this univac that is universal automatic computer so this uni stands for universal automatic computer so this is regarding first generation of a computer and here you can see the image of first generation computer along with this univac edvac and inia so let me move on to the second one that is second generation of a computer so we all know that what about the first generation computer and what they have used as a basic component and how the input and output has been taken but when it comes to the second generation of a computer here the duration was between 1956 and 1963 so 1956 and 1963 so then which is the basic component they have used that is transistors so they have used transistor as a basic component so these machines were much faster when it compares to the first generation of a computer then only it will be much faster more reliable that means we can trust the system so when i when i'm going to enter 2 plus 2 then i can expect that exactly i'm going to get the 4 so that reliable in the sense we can trust this uh, system in any of the circumstance so that is what they meant reliable then then any other earlier machine so when it compares to the first generation of a computer it was much faster and it was reliable than the first generation computer then it generates less heat 
so as i discussed earlier the first generation computer generate that means vacuum tube generate more heat and that consumes more electricity power but by making use of this transistor by making use of this transistor they have generate less heat and it consumes the less electricity power when it comes to the first generation of a computer so that is one more point which you can remember regarding the second generation of a computer so here we can see some more characteristics of this second generation computer so when it comes to the second generation computer for the input and output purpose what they have used here same as the first generation computer so here punched cards were used for the input and print out were used for the output purpose so you have to concentrate its duration and what is the basic component they have used whether it has a capability to hold more data or less data how the size and how the electricity will be consumed by this type of generation that you have to concentrate so in previous that is in first generation they have used the low level language that is machine understandable language machine language right when it comes to the second generation computer they have moved from machine level language to the assembly level language so we all have discussed regarding this assembly level language so assembly level language in the sense what instead of giving the values and information in the zeros and ones i am going to use the symbols that is known as what mnemonics i am going to call that as a mnemonics that is symbols so instead of giving the data and instruction in the form of zeros and ones i am going to give the data in the words so that will be represented by some symbols so which can be easily understandable than the binary values so they have used assembly level languages so this is regarding input output along with the programming what they have used so when it comes to the storage purpose so if you are performing some operation in the sense they have to be stored in some storage media right so they what they have used as a storage media here so magnetic core were used as a main memory so you all know that what about the main memory and secondary memory when i want to store the data temporarily i have to use the main memory when it comes to the secondary device that means if i want to store the data and instruction permanently i have to go with the secondary memory then they have used magnetic core for the main memory and magnetic tapes and disk were used for the secondary memory so they, here they are differentiating the memory either primary or a secondary memory so based on that they have used this materials then what are the example of second generation computer that is ibm 1620 ibm 7094 and cdc 1604 and then 3600 along with that univac 1108 so these are the example for second generation computer and also here you can see the image of transistor so in the second generation of computer they are going to use this transistor as a main material or a basic component so it's regarding second generation computer so now we'll see about this third generation of a computer then what was the duration of this third generation computer it was between 1964 and 1971 so you you can consider as a decade for each generation of a computer so when it comes to the third generation of a computer so instead of transistor they have changed their basic components to ic that is integrated circuit which is the basic component of this third generation computer that is ic integrated circuit were used in the place of transistor and in this generation main important point that is keyboards and monitors were used instead of punched cards and printouts so in the previous two generation they have used punched cards for the input and print out as an output right but when it comes to the third generation of a computer here they have invented and manufactured this keyboard and monitor for the input and output purpose so keyboard is for in order to take the input from user and monitor is used to display the output which is generated after the processing of data 
Then the ICs were increased the speed of the processing and storage capacity. So why ICs are used as a basic component in the third generation of a computer? Why? Because they have increased the speed of the execution. They have increased the speed of this processing and storage capacity also enhanced than the previous two generations. So that they have used ICs or integrated circuits as a basic component in the third generation of a computer. Then which is the programming languages they have used? That is high level programming languages. So we know that we have two levels of programming, low level and high level. When it comes to the low level, there we have machine level language along with the assembly level language. So when it comes to the high level language, there they are going to use the program or they are going to write the program in a human understandable form that will be in the English words. Okay, so these computers were more reliable, smaller in size and it is faster. So here you can write a same point for all the five generation. So except one and two. So you can write this point for all the remaining three generation from three, four, five. So you can write this point that is these computers are more reliable, faster, smaller in size and it has more capacity or more storage capacity is there than the previous generation that you can write. So when it comes to the third generation of a computer, so in this generation hardware failures were minimum or even rare. So here you can see the image of IC that is integrated circuits. So now we'll see some more points regarding this third generation of a computer. So we all know that in the third generation of a computer, they have used IC as a basic component so that hardware failures were minimum as well as rare. So if that is minimal or rare in the sense, the maintenance cost was low. So if there will be more hardware failures, then the cost of maintenance will be high. But that will be the not case in this third generation of a computer. So that here maintenance cost was low when it compares to the previous generation of a computer. Along with that, it will going to consume less electricity and it is smaller in size and it is faster, cheaper and reliable. So then what are the examples of this third generation computer? So we'll see now. So this generation of computers include IBM 360 series and Honeywell 6000 series then PDP that is personal data processor along with that we have one more example that is IBM 370 bar 168. So these are the example which comes under the third generation of a computer. So let me move on to the next generation that is fourth generation of a computer. So then what is the duration of this fourth generation of a computer? That is it is between 1971 to present. That means till date we are using these kind of computers which was fourth generation of computers. So when it comes to the fourth generation of computer then here what is the basic component they have used? That is microprocessor. They have used microprocessor instead of this ICs because ICs were used in the third generation of a computer. When it comes to the fourth generation of computer, here they have used the basic component called microprocessor. So here you can see the image of this microprocessor. Along with that, in this fourth generation of a computer, they have use of very large scale integrated circuit. The fourth generation of a computer is marked by the use of very large scale integrated circuits. So with the help of these circuits, this computer becomes more reliable, faster, cheaper in cost. Along with that, the computation or a processing speed was extremely good when it compares to the previous generation of a computer. So by making use of this very large scale integrated circuit it made the computer smaller in size and it became more powerful very very important it is more powerful than the previous two generation along with that it could be linked in order to form a network so in order to form a network they are going to use this very large scale integrated circuit so with the help of this we can build a network that is interconnection of the computer and the data transfer can be happened between the various computers that is what you have to understand and it is user friendly systems so when it compares to the 
previous generation of a computer that is not so user uh, friendly why because they have used printouts and they have used punch cards as a input and output devices so in the third generation only they have invented keyboard and monitor for the input and output purpose so by making use of those things it will be like more user friendly so when we have a monitors in the sense they we are going to use the icons menus and all the pop ups so that will be more friendlier than the previous generation of a computer when it comes to the output media so when it comes to the output display or output media so at the time it is more user friendly than the previous three generation of a computer then what are the examples for this kind of generation of computer that is so you can consider mini computers mainframe computers and personal computer so that is desktop computers or a pcs laptops these are the example for fourth generation of a computer and here you also see the image of microprocessor so when it comes to the fourth generation of a computer the year is between 1971 to present it is more reliable and software industry has been evolved in this generation along with that they have invented this desktop computers and all and it is smaller in size more powerful and it is cheaper in the cost and they have used mainly very large scale integrated circuit so it made the computer smaller in size and more powerful so what is the duration of this fifth generation of a computer it is from present to beyond so we are thinking beyond our present that is regarding this fifth generation of a computer so then which is the basic component that we are using in fifth generation of a computer so instead of writing a program or instead of instructing the computer i am making the computer as a intelligent system that is with the help of this artificial intelligence we are making the computers as more smarter than the human beings that is uh, we are giving the cognition to the computer system so that is by making use of this artificial intelligence concept we are making the computer to think by its own and it has to take the decision what has to be happen further so that is the main thing so as i discussed in the fourth a uh, generation of a computer they have used very large scale integrated circuits so along with that in the fifth generation of a computer they have used by making use of this vlsi along with ulsi that is ultra large scale integration technology so ultra large scale integration technology so here all the abbreviations are important for one mark question so what is eniac edvac univac and what is ic what is this vlsi what is lsi what is ulsi so these are all important for one mark question so when it comes to the fifth generation of a computer so these computers are more intelligent so you have to understand it is more intelligent and faster when it compares to the remaining generation of a computer so what i am doing i am making the computer to be intelligent it has to think by its own it has to take the decision so we are giving the human intelligence to the computer so that is nothing but artificial intelligence i am making the computer system more smarter and more knowledgeable so here development of super computers takes place so when it comes to the fifth generation of a computer so here the super computer evolved in the fifth generation of a computer along with that concept of parallel processing in computers so parallel processing in the sense instead of doing the single program we are going to use multiple process we are going to perform more than one process at a time that is parallel in nature so at a time it has to perform more than one task in the same way that is parallel processing that kind of concept has been evolved with the help of this fifth generation of computer then this type of generation of computers include that means what are the examples that i can take for fifth generation of computer that is desktop laptop notebooks and mainly robots so i can take this robot as a example for fifth generation of a 
computer so what is the year that is invented between the present and beyond so by further we are going to make the computer system more smarter than the human beings and it has to think by its own it has to take the decision that is regarding artificial intelligence in this generation we are going to use the vlsi along with the ulsi that is ultra large scale integration technology so it is more intelligent reliable faster cheaper and it requires the knowledge in order to work with it so and when it comes to the evolution of supercomputer has been takes place in this generation and it has used the concept of parallel computing and then the examples are desktop palm tower laptop along with that i have robots in the fifth generation of a computer so then how to remember all the points regarding all the generation of a computer here i have a tabulation column for you so in this you can see the generation along with that what is the basic material they have used in each generation and some of its feature so in the first generation they have used vacuum tubes and they are very slow larger in size and capacity that is storage capacity was less when it comes to the second generation which was the basic concept they have used that is transistor based it was based on the transistor and it was more faster than the first generation of computer and it is more reliable than the earlier machine so it generates less heat and it consumes less electricity power when it compares to the first generation of a computer then when it comes to the third generation of a computer which was the basic material they have used that is integrated circuit that is ic then what about the feature of this third generation that is smaller in size and it is faster and maintenance cost was low because hardware failures were less in the third generation of computers so if it is less in the third generation of a computer then the same thing will be happen with fourth and fifth that you have to understand then the cost or maintenance cost is very low when it compares to the previous generation of a computer system then what about this fourth generation so they have used vlsi microprocessor that is very large scale integration microprocessor and when it comes to the feature so these computers are more powerful reliable and it has more speed it has more storage capacity and it is more efficient than the previous all the generation so when it comes to the fifth generation of a computer we are using ulsi that is ultra large scale integration concept that is ultra large scale integration microprocessor based and when it comes to the features th so these computers are more reliable intelligent it is more faster than the all the previous generations so this is what you have to understand the regarding the generation of a computer remember it is important for five mark question along with that you can also expect this question for the one and two marks so when it comes to the one marks they are going to give you the expansion like univac edvac and vlsi lsi and then ulsi so along with that when it comes to the two mark question they may ask you like mention any two features of first generation or second generation like that so when it comes to the five mark question they are going to ask you like explain the generation of a computer so there you are supposed to write it a uh, year that is what was the duration of each generation and which is the basic material they have used and what are its feature and along with that you have to explain or you have to mention its one or more example so this is very very important regarding the generation of computer i hope you all understood with the today's session that is generation of a computer so in my next session i am going to discuss the classification of a computer how the computers are classified uh, how many ways we have on what basis they are going to classify the computers i am going to discuss in the next session so it's all about today's session i am going to meet you in the next session until that keep learning keep on growing thank you very much